So let's do our first photography shoot with the Platypod and let's see what we think of this piece of gear. So normally I wouldn't do a video like this. Normally I'd take the equipment that I've been given for review, play with it, use it for several months, and then do a review of it. Now this isn't a review video. This is my first time using it for an actual photo shoot. And I thought I'd just bring you along for the ride to see what we think of this platypod. So several things here. Obviously we have the platypod. We've got my macro backgrounds, tripods to put the backgrounds and the flares on. I have my syringe and spray bottle for uh, for water drops. We have the items that we collected out in the last video and we have some flowers for the background as well. And I'm not too sure what these flowers are so if you know what these flowers are let me know in the comments below because quite frankly I pinched them out of someone's garden. Don't get pinched your flowers out of people's gardens. Uh, do as I say not what I do. We're going to set this up now. So the first thing I want to do is uh, the most obvious thing is to set the camera up on the platypod. Now, because I'm on the table, I don't need to use these feet, so that's good. I'm going to place my Manfrotto tripod head on here. Get my camera. Yeah, one advantage you get with a, a tilt screen as well is I can tilt the screen out, the seat here, rather than having to look behind there. I see a lot of people going about they don't want tilt screens on their cameras. I do. I think most macro photographers do. So I'm outputting the EVF now so you can see exactly what my camera is seeing. And we're going to have a play with some of these items. And the one we're going to play with first is the selfie size C's that we collected out of the last video. So I'm going to grab some of those. Place that onto my tripod. And I have no idea what type of composition I'm going to go for for this particular shoot. Um, I might try the single drop in the middle. Okay, so I'm thinking of doing a refraction shot. We have these flowers here that are white and purple. So we're going to put a drops onto the south side seed. Now, obviously, this is the first time I've used the platypod, so I've got to try and bear in mind what I want to do or what I want to get from this particular shoot. So I'm going to up my ISO. That simply shows I can see a preview of the south side seed. I don't think we want to shoot at two to one. So I'm going to go to, let's try one to one on the magnification to begin with. And now I'm starting to see something that I'm liking here. I might try and put a drop right on the edge of that south side seed that you can see there. You don't want the water on the south side seed too long because they close up. I don't want the flares out of the water too long because they'll droop. Okay, so what I want to do is set up the lights for the platypod now and then we'll add the water drops on that afterwards. Now, typically on a shoot like this, I'd use my torch. You've seen it all before, my famous torch. And off the top of the head, the difference is here is we can get the lighting consistent with the platypod because we're not having to move it around. So that's going to be interesting to see if that pans out the way I hope it's going to. I think I only need to have the one light for this. We're going to, I want to keep things simple so you can follow along. I'm unsure whether that's going to be enough me to get the light round. I don't think it is so we're going to put an extra arm on and I do like that you can do this you can literally just extend the arms so you're not stuck with the one length you can extend those arms there we go for anyone who hasn't seen this technique before generally we light the background not the subject that's why we've got the arm going round and behind our flowers have gaps in between the petals so we are going to need a background card so this background card, I think it's going to work quite well for our scene. This is an A4 background card that's been laminated to protect it from the water that we use on these shoots. And then obviously the flower will go in there. Now when I start doing this, I've got to set up quite quickly. So let's set up the edge of the self size seed so that it's in focus. So what I'm thinking is the self size seed comes in from the edge here, down, water drop there and then we can have our refraction in the background. Set the camera roughly where we want it. Then I'm going to set up the self size seed and take our flare like that behind the self size seed. And these, uh, these little tripods, the height adjustable as well, so we can get the height just perfect if we want to. So next I'm going to place the water drop onto the self size seed. And this is a diabetic syringe. It's the best I've found for doing this type of work. I've got one on there. It's not quite where I want it. 
Anybody who's tried doing this will tell you how hard it is to make a drop stick onto a self I see it. It is very hard. Okay, so I'm going to place that just there. And unfortunately, we have one little drop that's right in front of it. It's going to have to be removed. There we go. All right, let's turn the light on for the background, which is our flower. Bring that in. What you want to do is line up the flower behind the drop. Right now, I can bring down my ISO. I want to come down to, let's take it down to 100. We'll bring our F stop down and start at 2.8, bring it to the maximum brightness, and then we shall adjust our shutter speed to get a good exposure. Okay. We're looking at about, um, I'm going to go one one thousandth of a second. We need to adjust the focusing in the fur, the drop so that we can see the flower in the background. Bring in our background. That is simply to fill in the holes that are in between the petals. And then we can take a picture. Here are some more example images using this exact setup. So, so far, I'm liking the platypod. Uh, I like the fact that I can get the camera onto the desk. That's a lot easier to do instead of the camera being on the tripod here and I'm having to lean over it. I like the fact that we can keep the light consistent. So it makes uh, focus stacking a little bit easier. Um, so far, I'm not really finding many down points to the platypod. The, uh, the lights are great. Uh, the arms are great. They seem to stick exactly where you want to put them. The only one downside I've noticed is if if you sometimes you touch them and they undo and they just come down, so you've got to really tighten them up. But that's just something you get used to over time. So so far I'm liking it. So I think what we need to do now before we do the full review, we need to get this thing outside and see what it's like outside in the field and see if there's actually an advantage taken out with us. But for now, I am going to be putting it into my kit bag, so we will be seeing what that is like in the future. Let me know what you thought of the images and of the platypod in the comments below, but that's where I shall leave it. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this particular video, and I'll see you on the next one. Got to get a new chair. And so we go from there down to there by the end of the video. See, I'd like it to be there and stay there, yeah, and not keep going down because the, um, the height adjustment's broken on the chair. I sit there, you can see it going down all the time. Can I have a pillow? <laughs> okay. Right. There we go. Perfectly height adjustable pillow. So let's do our first photography shoot with the platypod and so let's say straight off the bat I'm fucked up. I ain't got a memory card in there. And this is why we use multi camera angles. So I'm able to delete uh, or cut the parts out that we don't want. Let me know what you thought of the images and the play pod in the description. No, it's not in the description. Fuck me. Put my tongue back in again, will you? I'm in a drink.